You guys want something special, we're going to find out all about the HDO. Stay tuned, we're going to have Grumpy Trev crash test cow, but we're also special guests, world's number one ranked fastest FPV pilot in the world, Thomas Bitmarta. So uh, we're going to get his impressions on the HDO, so stay tuned. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, well, we've got a big one. It's been a long time coming and a lot of work because what we've got, this is the Fat Shark HDOs and hopefully a definitive review that really helps you viewers make up your mind. I know there's been some reviews in the past and when these first launched, there was like a whole, I don't know how it worked, but all the channels seem to do the same video at the same time and have nothing but praise. I've been testing these things for a little while and I wanna let you know, how does this $500 pair of goggles go? UAV Futures is all about giving you the right information to make an informed decision and get the best purchases. And in the past, Fat Shark hasn't really been, uh, I don't know, I haven't really said the best things about Fat Shark in the past. So I can't wait to show you this. We'll get my impressions, Grumpy Trev, Crash Test Cows, and also Thomas Bitmata, which is like the world's fastest pilot. He's won, so, he hasn't lost an event in like two and a half years of competing. He is an absolute god on the racetrack. We'll get my impressions. We'll compare him a lot to something like the Onway V1s and find out why the Fat Shark HDOs, you know, come in at a $500 price point. Is it worth it? And what are their features actually like? So let's stick it on the bench, quickly get through some of the text and the specs, and then we'll take it out to the field, rip it around, and show you those impressions so you can make the right choice for you. Also, too, stick around at the end because, look, I know a lot of people had nothing but praise for these, but for me, I've, I've got some big questions that I think it's really important to share with you guys as well. out here in the field pretty big day I'm very excited because look anybody who's watched this channel for a long time knows that I have slammed fat shark a fair bit I think they're too expensive and for a long time I actually preferred flying the Onway V1s and I've been testing out the V2s I'm very much I guess uh, a big fan of the stuff Onway has been making but a little while ago I did sort of fly around with these and the HDOs and I was kind of impressed but now we're going to put them through at serious paces, hand them over to Grumpy Trev, crash this cow, see how they go and find out are the HDOs a fantastic goggle, are they worth it, how do they perform, how do they compare to the Onways, all those sorts of questions. So let's stick them on, go for a flight and give you those impressions. Let's do it. Rightio, so first things first, I got to say with the headband and look it could just be needing a little bit of adjustment, I don't find it as comfortable but I've never found Fat Shark goggles as comfortable as the Onways, especially with the weight. So on my face, I do feel like it's gonna dig in a little bit more for a whole day of flying. But in saying that, the screen size is definitely bigger. But the more I fly, the more I also realize that screen size isn't everything. So many people, like Cal, you really love your massive big field of view. For me, after flying the Onway V1s and loving those, I realize that it's all, it doesn't really matter the screen size as long as it's not too small or too big i'm happy if it's anywhere in the middle i don't feel like there's one advantage over another now i'm not getting any blurring or anything like that but let's take it up see how it goes we're all clear i'm sure the quad's somewhere over there all good all right it is very clear one thing i do notice straight off the bat as you're flying around those leaves and you know when i was close to the ground before i took off you can really notice that. So the, the detail that you can get just for, from some analog video, I think you're right, Cal, when you said uh, it, this is about as good as it's gonna get. It is a very clear image. It almost reminds me of when we are flying around, we had those dodgy cameras, and then uh, people like, you should put a GoPro lens in the front of your camera, you know, it'll make it seem even better on your little HS 1177 FPV camera. And that's how this is. It is super clear, just that sort of next level. It is clearer than my Onways. It's clearer than my Onway V2s. There's no light leakage. You know, the 4x3, 16x9, I'm still on the fence over to which, uh, which one I actually prefer. And I, to be honest, I don't feel like I even have a preference anymore after flying so many different things because I'm always just focused in the center of the screen. I do think for a racer though, this is where it's going to make a difference is that detail and being able to see everything very clearly and hitting those gaps it will make, in my experience, flying a little bit easier. So if you're hitting those gates at you know high speeds, I do think you would have a small advantage over using these goggles. Would I want to use them all day though? That's very hard because for me, they're not as comfortable. So uh, it would take its toll. But if you're in it for trying to bring home the bacon, I could see an argument for saying, well, you don't wear them all day. Uh, I'm just going to use them to get on the podium. You could definitely be saying that. The colors look fantastic because they take a module 
Well, unless you've got a clear view, then I'm not, or not a clear view, uh, if the clear view one actually works, or a rapid fire, then it's no real, I'm not getting, finding any difference over like the onways or the sky zones because I find all the modules relatively sort of do the same standard sort of stuff. That's the standard modules anyway. So the reception's fine, but we can't really talk about that with these goggles because these don't ship with a receiver, which you're paying a lot of money and that's it's kind of frustrating. I don't really use a fan in my day-to-day -day flying, but I know Cal, you love the fan on all the time. Your eyes are like sweaty, sweaty meatballs. <laughs> But yeah, for me, uh, I, I think it is, you know, what a shame that Fat Shark doesn't have that fan built in. That's annoying. And an on-off switch would be would be nice as well. But the screens are definitely clear. And if you've got a nice camera in here, you can, you can tell the difference. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come in and land, and then I'm just going to quickly go up with my Onway V1. This is a bit of a direct comparison straight away, one after another. And I know I don't have an Omni antenna on. I just wanted to make the switch as quick as I could. Uh, I feel like the colours are warmer as well. That's something I should mention. So the Onways are much have much more green and blue, but it's it is yeah about 10, 15 percent clearer in in the experience between the two. Is it worth the price difference? I I don't really think so. It's a lot of money for a pair of goggles when the Onway V1s do a fantastic job as well. So to be clear, the the Fat Sharks are 10 to 15 percent clearer. Yep. Yeah, correct. That's, yeah, in, in, look, I'm not quantifying that with any scientific uh, super tests, but yeah, I, that's, that's how I would see it. All right, I'm going to bring this in because my radio has got a flat battery. Radio, so I guess to sum that up, and I'm going to compare it to my Onway V1s versus the HDOs, I, I really love these goggles. I think they're the best value goggle on the market. That's the Onways, but these, they were clearer. I didn't find them as comfortable on my face. You don't get a module, which is here and there some people like that some people don't like that if you want the rapid fire or a clear view module when that works that's going to be great but if not these are more than adequate that's probably how it's summed up all the other goggles they're more than adequate these these are for people who might be cashed up you want that advantage they did look clearer the colors are a bit warmer and if you really need that advantage to get on the podium or you've just got a bit of cash to burn you don't mind spending a bit of money to get the best of the best and you've got a good sort of warranty because i know fat shark has a great warranty as well and i guess in summary are these the best goggles on the market yes but they also are the most expensive by far anyway what we should do let's hand over to grumpy trev crash test cal we'll see what they think about them Radio GT, so uh, right here, it's been a long time coming, but we've got the HDOs. Now, Drew, you've been flying on ways for a long time, and we have sort of slammed Fat Shark in the past, but let's put all that aside, fresh eyes, what do you think, I guess, what are your first impressions on the HDOs? Well, they look like a Fat Shark, but shit. Okay. Yeah. They just look like a Fat Shark. Yeah. They don't look any different to me, so I feel about the same. We've got HDO written on them. Yep. Well, let's try them on and have a look. I think uh, the big part for this is the OL o OLED screens inside. Yeah, just want to turn that quite around so it's not facing the sun. <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> hey, you've still got Fat Shark on the screen. All right. Well, look, nice, really nice picture. Is it? That's really what I'm interested in. How is the picture in there? Yeah. Is it clear? It's clear, all right. Picture is really nice. Colours are nice. Very nice colours. I do like that, I must say. It's, uh, do you reckon you can see a difference with the special screens they've got in there? Do you think it would make it easier for flying or anything like that? Uh, look, I suppose it is clearer. I so said it's going to help, I guess. But uh, look, they, they're nice. They're pretty big compared to the Onways, of course. Colour is really, really nice. I, I, I could certainly fly with these. I'd have no issues with that. I just find it hard to see where the money is because these are aren't these about 700 bucks they're they? about 500 us dollars 500 you know which is 700 dollars australian i'd find it hard to put my hard-earned dollars into a set this expensive but having said that they are nice how do they feel on your face are they comfortable i've got to admit that they they don't dig in anywhere they do they do feel comfortable and look i've, I've put these things straight on and i can see all corners of the screen clearly no blurring no and normally, yeah, you said you've got to sort of wiggle your goggles around so you can see everything nice and clear. Like the OSD readout on this thing is very, very clear. I probably prefer these over my Onways. Okay. But value for money, I I just can't see that. I'm sorry, but uh, well, they're almost twice the price. Yeah, and 
Do you like the fact they don't come with a receiver that you can put in these receivers? Or how do you feel that sort of stuff? Well, all, all of them come without receivers, but... Well, so, the Omways have not built in. Yeah, uh, look, that's OK. You can put another receiver in, but I've never had any issues with the receiver or having the Omways. So I, I just think it's a bit of a all these receivers that are coming out. Uh, where the ones in them are really pretty good anyway. What's Grumpy Trev's rating out of 10 in terms of performance? Oh, uh, look, these are definitely a 10. No whistle or buts. They're very, very nice. Are they, okay, here's a good one to clarify. Are they the clearest goggles you've ever seen? Yes yeah, or no? I'd have to say yes. Okay. Yeah. But what about in terms of value for money? So at 500 bucks US, what would you give their value out of uh, 10 for... What's their... Yeah, out of 10 for value? Uh, give them a six. And that's being generous, I think. I just don't think they're worth anywhere near that. They are nice, I've got to tell you that, but... Just the money issue is with me. I just think they're too expensive for what they are. Who would you recommend these to then? Someone that's cashed up. If you can afford them, yeah, get them. But other than that, you know, there's other glasses out there for half the price that are not as good, but good enough to fly with. Okay, nice. Thanks, Trev. Anyway, well, this is uh, this is your pair. What's that? They're my HDV2s. Um, they're pretty old now, but they're still kicking along and they're still doing the job really good. And you prefer those, let's just, in, in all the reviews we've done, you always seem to prefer this style over, and the screen size, over the Omways that uh, Trevor and myself fly. I do, yeah. yeah. Alright. But, uh, yeah, and here we have the, uh, the new fat sh**. Fat sh**. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have the new fat shark uh, OLEDs, like they've got the new LG screens in them or something like that. So that's going to be interesting to see what that means. Uh, I know OLED technology is supposed to give better colours and deeper blacks and all of that, so uh, we'll see what that means in terms of FPV, but right. look, I'm starting to wonder what's going on at Fat Shark. I think they've had a look at my HD2s and gone, wow, Cal's HD2s look terrific. Let's steal those design cues and put them onto oh, our new what, OLEDs. the colour scheme that's going on? Yeah, look, you've got the black face plate, even the, the padding is uh, almost the same. <laughs> they look identical almost. Come on. All right, no worries. Let's do it. All right, give it a go. All right, Cal. So uh, you've got them on. You haven't taken off yet. How does the, how's the image look? Look, I, I can notice a, a little difference from the HD2 straight away. This, this screen size is slightly smaller. It's still a pretty generous field of view, so I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with that. And uh, honestly, I don't think I'd have a problem with that. So just a slightly smaller field of view. Look, the, the pixel density, it seems higher, I've got to say that. And the colours look rich. It looks good. But um, I'm just about to go for a little spin right now and see what that means as I fly. Look, they feel good. These are a very nice set of goggles. I don't think uh, anybody's going to have anything to complain about if they get a pair of these, except perhaps the price. Clear? Very clear. That's a very nice picture. I think that's pretty much as good as you're going to get with uh, analog video. It's fantastic. How much better is it than my HD2s? That's, uh, I'm not sure. So give me, I want you to give me, try and quantify this. So, how clear are these out of 10 and how clear are your V2s out of 10? Your HD2s out of 10? So the HDOs, what would you give them for clarity, sort of uh, sharpness of the image? Eight and a half. Okay, and what about oh, your... That, that, that's forgetting the fact that they do have a slight blurring on the, on the edges, but that's not really a problem for anyone that uses these goggles. On so these goggles, you mean? On the HD2s. Oh, okay, so HD2... Uh, hang on. This is getting confusing. The HD2s, you give an eight and a half and saying plus they have a little bit of blurring on the edges. Yep. Yep. What about these ones? What would you give the clarity of these goggles out of 10? I would give them a nine or maybe a nine and a half actually. Okay, so you reckon about 10% sharper maybe for you? Yeah, I think so. And there's no blurring on the edges whatsoever, which is kind of nice. But like I said, it's a slightly smaller field of view and I like my big field of view. But it's uh, not something you're going to really notice too much. Yeah, no, no. Look, they're, they're a quality set of goggles, and I think they're going to be great for anyone doing a bit of track racing or a bit of freestyle. If you've got a bit of money and you want a pre premium product, this is going to be the way to go, um, I think. Well, Trevor said they were the best goggles he's ever tried, the clearest. Would you agree with that statement? Or yeah, you... yeah. Look, I would agree with that. Are they comfortable? Do they it, feel any different to your normal fat sharks? No different. They're very comfortable. They're perfect, yeah. 
Um, the only thing, you know, I, I wish I'd get it, move away from the uh, the fan jack on the face plate. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I'd find a way to integrate the fan function with the, agree. with the goggle. Um, so that's the only thing that I'm lamenting about. But you know what I'd also like is an on-off switch, but anyway. Yeah, that would be nice for the fan. Or, and, and, or Just what, to power the unit on and off. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. But, you know, all things being equal, a pretty good goggle, and if you've got a bit of uh, cash in your wallet and you decided that you want to make the big plunge into uh, premium goggles, yeah, th this is definitely what to look at. Who would you recommend them to? First-time pilots, experienced pilots, pro racers? Who do you think this is? I think experienced pilots who just want to upgrade and, and get the best that they can get for whatever they're doing. Yeah, experienced pilots. Look, for the price, they're going to be just too much for anyone that's a beginner. And look, there are a lot of good goggles out there for for people who are starting out in a much cheaper price point. So I think they're going to be better served looking at those goggles first. But those who have been in the hobby for a while and uh, they're into a bit of serious racing or free, serious freestyle, this is what they'll be looking at for sure. And I think most most people are just going to love these. All right. Nice. I guess what's Cal's famous four words? Sum it up for Fat Shark. Not a perfect product, Fat Shark, but you're almost there, look. That's a lot of words. Yeah. <laughs> and you need a lot of words to, to convey that message to Fat Shark. Look, they're almost there. In terms of picture and quality, they're fantastic, but just a few little uh, tiny details that could make these uh, goggles perfect, which they're unfortunately neglected to include. Right. Rightio, so you've seen Grumpy Trev's, myself, and also Crash Test Cal's impressions, but now it's time for the real treat, the Pro Racer. What's it going to be like? So Thomas has just switched over from the HD, the, the oh, blues? The Dominator V3s, yeah. Yep. So the 16 by 9 um, old, Small old goggles. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now we've got the HDOs on. You're ready to rip. We're going to get your impressions, and I want to find out, you know, what made you make the switch. Ready to do it? Yep. Alrighty. All right, Tom, ready when you are, mate? Yeah, okay, so far up. Yep. Um, 35 degrees till. Here we go. Okay. All right, so, so what I'm really interested in is because you've just made the switch and I want to know why you made the switch. Okay, so the biggest reason was that OLED screen, right? Um, compared to the other goggles, not much has really changed besides that new screen. And I think they've done a couple little changes in the background. And this screen is amazing. After using it for three days, so now I'm at the point where I don't get dizzy when I'm flying. I got a little bit dizzy on my first pack this morning, but then other than that, I'm actually like pretty settled. Um, flying it at Eastside, uh, at a track I wasn't comfortable with, with a quad I wasn't comfortable with, I was able to fly pretty comfortably. So, well, now that I've settled to it, um, it's that screen, it's just magical. Um, you can see gates way earlier. When I was doing my first testing with them, I found while I was unsettled with them, because I could see earlier, I was just correcting earlier. So it was like, even though... I was uncomfortable, I had like double the amount of data to work with. Okay. Do you feel like it definitely gives a uh, you an advantage in the field over your old goggles? I think definitely once I've adapted to them, uh, that will be the case. When I did make mistakes, or like even now if I make mistakes, I find it a bit hard to get back on the track just because I'm kind of like, whoa, I reverted back to 16 by 9 mood. So once I've adapted though, I think definitely it'll be an advantage in the sense you'll just be able to see more spotting traffic, I think will be a big one on the track. And then also when they have guide ropes and that. So if you say a board off a track and you're like, oh, okay, hang on, where am I? You'll be able to go like, oh yeah, there's something in the way or whatever, roll around it. See everything a lot earlier. For freestyle, I think this will be really good because you're gonna see all ghost branches and that. Meaning you should be able to adapt to parks a lot quicker than you would normally. Do you prefer the larger field of view that these ones had? If you had to, you know, if you could have that 16 by nine, but these screens, what would you prefer? It's actually a hard one now that I've kind of adapted. There's benefits to both. The benefit of this is, especially on bigger stuff where you're looking further ahead. So with this, because it's a bigger image, looking at stuff further away, it's a lot easier to line up. But if you're, say, taking something kind of weird where you might have to kind of enter it, enter at a weird angle or you're using like your full screen, this is harder because all of a sudden you're kind of darting your eyes around the whole screen to get a good idea of where you're aiming at. Yes, yeah, so you're <laughs> actually stuck in the yep. flag. In the flag. So thanks very much. Paul's going over there because Thomas had a little crash into a flag. He's got tangled up, but I guess so you feel like the screens do help. But what about, is there anything you don't like about the goggles? It's not really that I don't like. It's not a disadvantage from what we had before, but it's more like the little things like, you know, adding a switch. If they could have an easy to access DVR, that stuff would be just amazing. It'd make the goggles something that's already like, like right now it's the best, but doing that would make it like 
on a whole other level. It'd okay. just make it a It'd really... make it even bester a bester <laughs> Yeah. So, um, one more thing about the big field of view that I'm still having a bit of trouble adapting to, because it's bigger, looking at the voltage on the little corner, it's kind of hard because before I would almost use my periphery to go, I am on X many volts, okay, back off the pace a little bit, okay, voltage is back up, go for it again. But now it's like I genuinely have to kind of flick my eyes over, okay, this is the voltage, and at that point the quad's already traveled like 10 meters, so getting used to that still. I don't know if that's something that's just over time I'll adapt to, or if it's just a fact of the bigger field of view it's what I'm gonna have to deal with, but I guess that's one of the things we'll see with time. All right, and I guess two more things. What do you think about the price, and who would you recommend these goggles for? So, you know, would you recommend that, would you upgrade? Because you did upgrade, and why'd you make that upgrade, and who are some other people that should buy them or shouldn't buy them and all that sort of stuff? I think if you're, like, you've decided, oh yeah, I want to get into this hobby, and you haven't got goggles and stuff yet, and you just want the best, I mean, you're gonna have the best experience with it. It's got the best monitor, and at the end of the day, that's what you're flying through, so. It's just, it's heavenly, especially compared to what we've got right now. I reckon for freestyle, it's gonna be magical. If you've already got higher end goggles or you're kind of just doing kind of relaxed racing, maybe you can spend that money somewhere else. Like you might get an advantage of say getting new motors or something out like that. But it's one of those things, it's like the video is what you fly through. So it does kind of add a whole other element. And I think it's one of the things that's really dependent on what you want from your setup as to whether it's worth the extra money or whatever if you could maybe sell off your old goggles to then kind of make up that difference a little bit because uh -huh. you are getting a better experience still but okay. what about for pro racers i guess like it's got because this is your job for... like you you are a professional racer and uh so what would you say for those pro racers out there who are 100 percent serious they want the best of the best to get that get first on the podium well it's definitely the next step so i mean if you're trying to cut down every little bit i mean yeah. having being able to see earlier and react earlier is a big massive advantage it just all of a sudden takes out a whole other problem out of the equation so right. i mean yeah it's definitely if you can afford the advantage i mean yeah it's better okay. you'll like it you won't regret it okay no worries all right thanks tom <laughs> rightio so hopefully you guys enjoyed that massive shout out for thomas and paul and uh you know bms web i'll put their channel down below go check that out check those links a little card should pop up here as well and we also had a flight maybe a year ago we had a bit of a race together and thomas whooped me and he is even faster now Definitely uh, deserves to be the world's fastest pilot. Awesome kid, awesome family. So go check their links out, and I guess that's it for this special little bonus feature. But drop your comments down below. I'd love to know what you think as well, getting some people like this on here to help you make the right decisions. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Alrighty, so there it is. There's my review of the Fat Shark HDOs. I know it was a bit of a long one, but it was designed to give you guys as many impressions as I could. And I thought it was really important as well, getting a pro pilot on the channel to figure out what these were like and why they made the switch. Because in summary, let's get some parts out of the way. Is it the best goggle on the market in terms of optics? Absolutely, it is so clear. Is it gonna give you an advantage? Yes, these are the best things if you want an advantage on the field. You want it, whether it be freestyle and you're looking for every little bit of scraggle on a tree or you're on the racetrack and you need as much detailed information to make those quick turns, passes, see those gates straight away, you've got more time to react, this goggle is gonna give you an advantage. But for me, are they perfect? And I'm gonna say absolutely not. <laughs> and probably the big one for me is the price. Look, I know they perform really, really well, and Fat Shark might not like me saying this, and look, I know I've seen the videos with Joshua Barwell and where they go through their pricing and all that sort of stuff, so whether I'm, whether I'm talking expense or not, I'm gonna say value-wise. For me, for the everyday pilot, you know, for the mum or dad or just the kid after school, is it worth paying 500 bucks on a pair of goggles? A lot of, you know, I've seen a lot of review brewers say, yeah, it's great, it's worth it, you know, all those sort of things, but for me, it's so much money and I don't think they're perfect. Even, you know, if you're paying 500 bucks, Fat Shark, you should be able to put in an on-off switch. You shouldn't have to plug in that balance lead for a fan. All that sort of stuff should be fixed when you're the premium makers in the goggle market, you should be able to fix those things in the future. And I don't wanna to have to wait 12 months to see an extra revision and all that sort of stuff. Get it right when I'm paying that much money. But at the moment, we don't really have too much choice. I have heard of some other things coming, but if you want the best goggles on the market, and you're gonna have the best advantage, these are it. Just in my opinion, they are very, very expensive. So anyway, I'd love to know what you think. Definitely drop your comments down below. 
And uh, I'm, I do have to say a shout out to Fat Chuck for sending me this pair of goggles. I know it wasn't in their original press release or whatever those first, all those reviews when they all popped up and all that NDA, all that sort of stuff happened. But for me, that's my impressions. All those other people's impressions as well. Shout out to Grumpy Trove, Crash this Cal. Also to Thomas Bitmarty. Good luck in the races, mate. I'm, I know you're going to absolutely crush it. Subscribe for more FPV related content. Put your comments down below. What do you think about the Fat Sharks? Because I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying they're very expensive and they're also not perfect, but they are the best we've got at the moment. Subscribe for more FPV related content. That's enough rambling. That's a big mouthful. And as always, happy flying.